Hello everyone and welcome to Practical Hub channel. In this video, you are going to see about the lab that you will be pursuing in your second year first semester from Computer Science Department, that is the Java lab. Java is a general purpose computer programming language that is concurrent, class based and object oriented. Java was developed by Sun Microsystems in the year 1991 and later acquired by Oracle Corporation. It was developed by James Gossip. Before we start learning Java, let's get familiar with some common Java terms. The Java Virtual Machine, Bytecode, Java Development Kit that is also called as JDK and Java Runtime Environment. Java Virtual Machine also called as JVM. The primary function of JVM is to execute the bytecode produced by the compiler. There are different bytecodes for different operating systems, but gives the same output for each and every operating system. That is why Java is said to be platform independent. Bytecode The Java C compiler compiles the source code into bytecode so that it can be executed by the Java virtual machine. The bytecode is saved in .class file by the compiler. Java Development Kit As the name suggests, this is complete Java Development Kit that includes JRE that is Java Runtime Environment, Compilers and various tools like Java Debugger etc. In order to create, compile and run Java program, you would need JDK installed in your computer. Java Runtime Environment also known as JRE JRE is a part of JDK which means that JDK includes JRE. When you have JRE installed in your system, you can run a Java program. However, you won't be able to compile it. JRE includes Java Virtual Machine, Browser Plugins and Amplet Support. Now, let us discuss about the features of Java. As you have seen, there is a big list here. The features include Simple, Secured, Platform Independent, Robust, Portable, Architecture Neutral, Dynamic, Interpreted, High Performance, Multi-Threaded, Distributed and Object Oriented. Here is a brief note of all the features of Java. If you want to take a look, just pause the video and take a look. As you guys also have seen that, there are completely 12 features of Java. It's a little bit difficult to remember, right? So here is a small memory code for you guys to remember all the features of Java. That is, HOD's rapid essence. Here, H refers to high performance, O refers to object oriented, D refers to distributed, S refers to simple and so on. Now, it is the time to learn the crucial parts of Java, that is, a class and an object. Generally, a class is a user-defined blueprint or prototype from which objects are created. It represents the set of properties or methods that are common to all objects of one type. As you have seen in the picture that it has taken an example of a car. That is, a class has given a rough view of how a car should be made. But whereas, when it comes to an object, it is a basic unit of object-oriented programming and represents real-life entities. An object consists of state and behavior. State represents the attributes of an object and whereas the behavior represents the methods of the object. Let us consider the same car as an example. Color and size define the state of the object and mileage and speed define the behavior of the object. So, finally we can say that a class is an instance of an object. Now, let us see how to declare a class. At minimum, a class declaration must contain the class keyword and the name of the class that you are defining. In Java, every class has a superclass. If you do not specify a superclass for your class, it is assumed to be the object class. Inside a class, you will be having instance variables as well as methods. These variables and methods could be kept private or public. The declaration of the instance variables as well as the methods will be taught in the next class. Now, let us see how to create an object in Java. Basically, an object is created from a class. In Java, the new keyword is used to create new objects. There are three steps involved in creating an object. Declaration, Instantiation and Initialization The first step is the declaration that we need to specify a name for the object that is to be created and this should be placed very next to the class name. The second one is the instantiation. The new keyword is used to create the object. The third one is the initialization. The new keyword is followed by a constructor. This call initializes the object. 
As you have seen, rectangle followed by parenthesis is the default constructor. That's all for today. Thank you.